Thank you. Thank you. Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. It's nice to have you one more time. We're going to have another class here, as you may know, um, soon. Welcome, welcome. I wish you the best, and I hope all of you are really a really nice week. Good evening, uh, Maria Santos. It's nice to have you. Um, welcome to this English class. Thank you so much for being here on time. We will continue working on this thing, which is learning English. I hope that we can have, um, let's say, time for, for we can, uh, so yeah, so we can have a lot of practice in here. We will continue working with this section number five is the one we are working. So welcome so much, Karen, Elizabeth, Bernard. It's nice to have you one more time. And I really appreciate your effort. I know it's been a, like heavy for you and, and it's been like a really tough, um, let's say month and situation you're facing. Um, so um, I really appreciate everything you've done so far. Okay, um, thank you so much for, for being there. You, yes, and I, and I wish you the best. I hope that um, you get well as soon as possible. Okay, so thank you, Marlene, hello. Good evening, Marlene. Good evening, teacher. Oh, how are you? Are you sick? No? Yes. Oh, oh my gosh. I'm sorry to hear about it, okay? So I will keep that in mind. So uh, I won't ask you, like, a lot today. Okay, Marlene. Oh, she's sick. Okay, that's not good. Okay, what is one suggestion that we can give to her? What is... Hello, Michelle. Welcome. How are you? Hello, teacher. I'm fine. Oh, you see, Marlene is sick. What is one suggestion that you can give her? She got a, a call, I guess, right? Yeah, she got a call. What is one suggestion that you can tell her? When somebody gets sick with a call, what is one suggestion that you can give to her or to him? Oh, Giovanni, thank you so much for letting me know. I got it. Thank you. Yes, wonderful. Perfect. Okie dokie, people. We're going to start uh, with today's class. Let me show you what's going to be uh, the material for today. It's going to be an easy class for you. Okay, so we're going to work with class number 14 today. And as you may know, we're working with section number five, five which is crossing cultures. Cross-cultural experiences. Oh, look at this one. We're going to work with cultural uh, experiences. I love this one. Yes. Uh, one more time. This is class number 14. And this is the thing we're going to work today. So it's nice to have you. Yes, all of you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I really appreciate your effort. Hello, Jenny. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? I'm great. Tonight. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Okay. How's the weather? How's the weather today? Mm, he, in my neighborhood, mm -hmm. is warm. It's, it's warm, right? It's, it's not raining. It's not raining, so it's pretty much warm. Thank you so much, Jenny. Okay. We're going to have some information. Look at the picture, please, Jenny, and describe the picture. What do you see here in the picture? Where is this uh, person? How does he look like? And what is his profession or occupation? Or I don't know. You tell me. Um, it's a, uh, I mean, uh, maybe a photographer and a salesman in a market. Maybe in. Maybe in Paris. <laughs> Maybe in Paris. Okay. Maybe in Paris, right? What is this this gentleman wearing? What is he wearing? Wearing a shirt, a green shirt, the green and a t-shirt, light blue. A light blue t-shirt. Very good. Thank you so much. Um. Yeah. And what is this place? that you can see here in this picture. What is this place? You told me it's Paris, maybe, right? Maybe on a market. 
maybe a market, right? We have a vendor here, we have a burden. Remember that a salesperson is usually the person that is in a building, like inside of a store. But a oh, vendor in the in, in a mall? Yes, exactly. And a vendor is the person like who usually like sells outside. outside. Like here in the picture, we have a vendor. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Jenny. That's very good. Thank you so much. We're gonna have Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Are you here? Sarah. Thank you. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. Thank oh, you. that's good. Are you happy today? Yes, I am. I'm glad to hear that. Do me a favor, please. Read the information about culture sh shock. Okay, culture shock. The emotional and physical distress you may feel when you visit a foreign country or culture has three stages. The first stage, sometimes called the honeymoon stage, is characterized by ex exaggerated happiness and excitement. In the second stage, you might feel angry or sad at not being able to communicate or understand the other culture. You might even get physically ill. Finally, in the third stage, you realize that the new culture offers rewards as well as challenges, and you feel ready and able to adapt to a new lifestyle. Thank you so much. Okay, very good. What do you think about this information? Let me see. Blanca. Hello, Blanca. Good evening. What do you think? What is your opinion about this information that Sarah was reading? Hello, teacher. Uh, well, okay. I think, but it depends the country because I don't know if you, when you are in your country, you are excited because you are going to visit a new country. But it depends the how do you say son? Zona? Like areas or it, places? Yeah, it, it is depend the place that you visit because no no the all places are beautiful than how you imagine. So you may me you get disappointed disappoint, disappoint uh, when you stay in this in that place thank you so much that is true that is absolutely true okay thank you so much maria santos lopez can you participate oh okay oscar thank you so much for letting me know so maria tell me please let me see can you participate maria santos lopez yes or no yes uh, Roberto Eduardo Escamilla, good evening. Can you participate? Yes or no? Hey, how are you doing, teacher? Oh, it's nice to have you. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, can't complain. Everything is awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, do me a favor. Work with question number one. Have you ever seen a visitor to your country experiencing a uh, cultural shock? Like, have you seen a, like a friend? or like a visitor that comes to uh, like our country facing this kind of, let's say, cultural shock? Not really. Just I hear something about the another culture. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about that? For example, uh, the American people, for example, uh, they have a for example, uh, uh, one of friends uh, told me about the the the, the culture. Uh, he living in Boston, and he told me um, that people uh, all the time uh, the weather is cool, very cool, freezing, and only for for the summer they. They using a different wearing, and after uh, just for two months, 
and after that, uh, they put in a jacket, and is everything is very, it's very cold, and so that people either is is uh he told me he's different because for example, uh they like to eat a lot of pizzas, uh, he they have a lot of storage with pizzas and they if you're going to buy a pizzas uh you can buy like a pupusas uh uh you can buy uh slices just for one one dollar or two dollars and uh what else and he told me uh and in in that state in boston uh and they uh, that people is it, a, a lot of people, you know, for example, Arabian people or American people, Italian people. Uh, so you learn, uh, uh, you learn uh, a lot of a lot of culture about that. Yeah, Massachusetts, right? Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. It is in Massachusetts. Very good. Yeah. I yes. mean, like, that is one huge thing that Salvadorian people face when they uh, go to the United States or also Canada, the weather condition. Yes. Um, and that's why sometimes we can get <laughs> some clothes from, from these places, right? Yes. Because uh, yeah. the weather is, is like really like extremely cold in some places over there. So, uh they don't enjoy that's why they they try to like salvadorian people try to like uh, get back to El salvador so, so like they don't like it yeah you know? thank you so much for sharing that very good we're gonna work with janet janet carolina rivera hello janet hello janet Janet, hello, Janet. Can you participate? No. Yes, let's work with Neftali. Can you participate, Neftali? Yes or no? Yes, sure. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Please, the second question, number two. What kind of person do you think experiences cultural shock the most severely? Severely, it's like heavily. Yep. Like what kind uh -huh. of person? Like, I don't know. I don't know, teacher, but sometimes I watch videos about Luisito Comunica. Oh, yeah, because, exactly. That's a good because, one. Yes, he traveled for around the world. And, and for example, he visited a, a lot of cultures around the world. And I saw the last video about he visited Indonesia, where the people dig up, dig up their familiars and they change their, their clothes for the new, for the new clothes. So this is this is very strange for me. Uh -huh. Yeah, that is that is true. Yes, he he know a, a lot of cultures, and so he visit a lot of countries, and so it's is it, very is very nice and so amazing. I think. And yes, that is true, and also uh, I was watching some videos from this guy. Yes, and and he talks a lot about the food, right? How. Food can be so difficult, yeah, because in some places for them, the food is delicious, but for us, because we have a different mm -hmm. taste, it's maybe it's not, yeah, so yeah, sometimes, yeah. sometimes we get like a stomach ache, yeah, when we get some food from other countries, yeah. and that is that is normal because our body like reacts in a negative way when we have a, a different kind of ingredients or food. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. That's very nice, Nathalie. Thank you. That's a good point, That's right? Good. You can check our videos from uh, these YouTubers so you can get information about other countries. We're going to work yeah, with this. Yes, that is true. Thank you so much. We're going to work with this vocabulary. Put the words below in the warm up. So this is a travel abroad, let's say, chart. And uh, you can, uh, like, let's say, use this vocabulary in this. These categories, we have customs, feelings, and scenery, right? Customs, feelings, scenery, okay? 
What about customs? What are the things that we can have with customs? Mm -hmm. Any idea? Eating a huge meal, meal at lunch. Oh, okay. Okay, let me see. Oh, okay, let me get this one. You told me eating a huge, right? Yes. Eating, oh, jeez. Eating a huge uh, meal, okay, at lunch. Oh, yeah, we do that, right? <laughs> In the Sabbath, we do that, yeah. Well, just when we get paid. When we get paid, we have a big lunch. But then the rest of the month, we're just the normal meal, right? Yes, very good. What is another thing? Is it confused? Confused. Excuse me? Excuse me? Con confused uh, the feelings, right? Oh, yes, very good. Very good. I want to write it here. Yeah, that. Okay, confused. Yes, confused. Very good. Sometimes we, we feel confused, right? When we travel to like another country and we don't get something, we, we feel confused. Yeah. In costume, Most... in costume and kissing in public. Oh, kissing in public. Yes, like in Japan, right? Just be careful if you if you travel to Japan. Uh, just they don't like this thing in public. Okay. Kissing in public. Very good. We're here in El Salvador, that's normal, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry. Okay. What about <laughs> something else uh, with feelings? I don't know. Or maybe with customs. Shaking hands, shaking hands. Oh, that is customs or feelings? Customs. Okay. Thank you. Shaking hands. What is that thing? Oh, yes, I got it. Like shaking. It's not that a Yankee, right? It's shaking. Okay, that's something else. Shaking hands. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're going to have Philips. In a scenario, um, picturesque. Oh, picturesque. Okie dokie. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Picturesque. Picturesque. Very good. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Like El Salvador. Beautiful, right? Spectacular. Spectacular. Oh, exactly, right? Spectacular. What is that thing? I don't Surprise. See Maybe in feelings, right? Oh, yes, that is true. Spectacular. Yes, binocular. Okay. Spectacular. Uh, you tell me, what is another one? Confu surprise. Oh, surprise. surprise. Oh, surprise. I'm sorry. Surprise. Yes, you feel surprised sometimes, right? When you when you get the prices of food. Oh, you feel, Jesus, is that is that for real? Right? <laughs> Give me two pupusas. Oh, it's the one at two dollars and fifty cents. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, can you repeat that? Yeah, when you get the prices of food. You get like a huge surprise on that one because now food is very expensive. Yeah. Just, I think, like Little Caesar is still, we have with $5, but the rest is gone, I guess. It's gone. So everything is expensive outside. Last last time I asked, oh, what is the price of this Anona? Oh, that's $5. It, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. You know how much is that? $5 per Anona? I mean, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of money. So, um, yeah, just give, give me one apple. Okay. Yes. 30 cents. Okay. That's better for me. Okay. Thank you so much. Very good. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to like stop sharing so I can delete this one. Yes. Give me a minute. Okay. Here we go. Let's carry on. Okay. What things do you think cause people to experience culture shock? We're going to try to guess, right? We have climate, clothing, families, food, uh, greetings, hotels, language, transportation. So what things do you think people like get like shock when they travel abroad? And what is, what is one like, or what are those things that for you like 
you will be surprised when you travel. Mm -hmm. Jose Lino, tell me one, please. Maybe language. Oh, maybe language. Very good. Language, because we, if we travel to China, right? Yes. yes. Oh, I mean, that's pretty much heavy. The only thing I know is a little bit of BTS, but that's from South Korea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> a little bit of Blackpink. That is the only thing <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nothing much. And a little bit of Naruto Uzumaki, but the rest, I mean, that's from Japan. Yeah, Goku, you know. Yeah, but then... <laughs> <laughs> nothing else yeah nothing else Olga tell me another thing that maybe will be like a cultural shock transportation oh transportation right yes yes like here in El Salvador we got a lot of buses yeah so if we travel to Soyapango a lot of buses mm -hmm. if we travel to I don't know Santa Tecla a lot of buses but if like if believe me if you live in Canada I had a friend I have a friend who lives in Canada and he's like, he waits like an hour or half an hour for a bus. And, <laughs> and sometimes it's like he gets really mad when, when he missed the bus. Because cause it takes like like long time to, to get another one. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you so much. Very good. Let me ask. Um, okay. Jesus. Okay. Michelle, Beatriz. Tell me another thing that may cause people to experience cultural shock. Michelle, hello, Michelle. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, no, no, okay, okay. You thank you. Let's move. Oh, Karen Elizabeth, thank you. Go ahead. For oh, me. yes, food. Yeah, I, I, we were working, we were, we were talking about food with Neftali, right? Be careful with food. Because yeah. maybe you can, if, if you go, for example, to Mexico, they love chili. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got a bunch of chili pretty much in everything. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you get a marshmallow, that chili over there, right? Let's have it with chili. So be careful because maybe like that will like you get a stomachache or like a, sorry, like a big, like full diarrhea. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, so <laughs> if you travel to uh, India, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I saw some videos like people were like cooking uh, like uh, with the hands food in India. I don't know if that is true, but those are the videos that I got from uh, TikTok. So be careful with food if you travel. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, let me see the next information for you. We're going to watch this video about traveling abroad. Let's listen and watch. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camila. And I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but uh, I moved to Rio when I was four. And I've lived here ever since. Two years ago, I went to Sweden 
and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil we kiss on the cheek and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that. It was strange. <laughs> This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here the bus system is private and so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus, and sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman and she was making me lunch one day and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. That was bon voyage. Oh, Jesus. That was a surprise. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Why well, in the video, as you may saw, like we have like some similarities, right? Like here in El Salvador with the buses, right? <laughs> they try to get you in. <laughs> yeah, so that was very good. I love that that video. Yeah, because it, it makes me like, oh, so we are quite similar. Like here in El Salvador with a bunch of people yelling at you, saying like, oh, metro, 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 right? Subale. Yeah, that was very old. So yeah, so yeah, so yeah. Yeah, or Tecla, right? So, uh, like, we are quite similar, yeah, with public transportation, like here in El Salvador and also in Peru. Yes, so uh, that's quite good. We're going to complete this information. Number one, Camila Lips. Madam. Excuse me? She lives in Sweden. Mm, she's from, yes, she's originally. She's live in Rio de Janeiro. Exactly. Yeah, very good. So that means Brazil. Okay, ¿cómo nos quedaría la sentence? She, oh, lives in Brazil, right? Is there already. Okay, Brazil. Brazil. And visited? You told me yeah. Sweden. Sweden. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, Sweden. Very good. Thank you. What about Andrew? Mm -hmm. yeah. From the United States. Good night. Oh, from it's from I love said, uh, United. Ah, uh, United. Oh, United. I think it's states like this one. United States of America. Oh, jeez. Lives in. 
Peru. Okay. Peru, right. Peru, we have tilde, yes or no? Do we have tilde with Peru? No? Let me know. Because I don't remember. I'm sorry. Delfino. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm uh, sorry for Delfino. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He, I think he he did it just for the green card. Yeah, I guess <laughs> just for the, the papers. papers. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, um, he's from <laughs> Mexico. Exactly, Mexico lindo, right? Oh, sorry, Mexico, Mexico lindo. What about and he lives in? Uh huh. He lives in United States. Exactly. United States. Right. Yeah, he got the papers and now, okay, United States. He lives there in New York. New York. Yes. Okay. Very good. Oh my God. I'm sorry. Okay, for the laughing, but it makes me laugh. I mean, uh, the stories were like quite good. Yeah, yeah. Delfino, like he he nailed it, right? He nailed it with the food. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm gonna take some time so I can take the attendance. When you hear your beautiful name, do me a favor and say present or I'm here. Blanca Maria Gonzalez Urias. Present. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you, Blanca. Welcome. Edgar Fernando Portillo Cabrera. Hello, Edgar. Are you here? Check the chat. Edgar, are you here? Yes, I think Ergan is trying to get into the class. Yeah. Okay, what about Giovanni Stanley Flores? You wrote in the chat, right, Giovanni? Yes, thank you so much for letting me know. I got you. Um, Janet Carolina Rivera Villanueva. Janet, thank you so much. Oh, Jesus, give me a minute. I'm sorry. I did something wrong. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Welcome. Um, Jose Lino Alvarenga Gomez. Present teacher. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's nice to have you. Karen Elizabeth Bernard de Averar. Welcome. Present teacher. Nice to have you one more time. Karen Yvette Villanueva Guzman. Present teacher. Thank you so much for being here. Carla Selena Hernandez Guevara. Present teacher. Thank you so much. Maria Santos Lopez Lopez. Maria Santos Lopez Lopez. Maria Santos Lopez Lopez. Uh, let me see. I think I saw Maria. No, she isn't here. Okay. No, she isn't. Okay, let's carry in the on. Chat, teacher. Oh, in the chat, let me check. Yes, she. Oh, yes, she wrote. Yeah, she wrote something here in the chat, but I think she's not here anymore. Cause I don't. Oh, yes, Maria. Thank you. I got you. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm quite. I'm quite choco sometimes. I don't see names. Uh, Michelle Beatriz Diaz Guzman. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you. Welcome. And Marlene Elizabeth Valle Barahona. Present teacher. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you. Welcome. Neftali Antonio Mejia Miranda. Present teacher. Gentlemen, good evening. Nice to have you. Olga Marleni Gomez Rios. Present teacher. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you one more time. Oscar Alexander Santana. You told me Present right teacher. that. Thank you so Perfect. much. Welcome. It's nice to have you. Roberto Eduardo Escamilla Garcia. Uh, present teacher. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It's nice to have you. Sara Elisa Belloso Hernandez. Present. Thank you so much and welcome. Wendy Cecilia Molina Rosales. Present teacher. Wonderful. It's nice to have you one more time. And Jan Jenny Carolina Ardon Cruz. Present teacher. I almost mispronounced your name, Jenny. Okay, thank you so much. Welcome, everybody. Yes, it's nice to have you. Let's continue. As you may know, we're working with this information about culture shock. Okay, it's a good one. Now, we're going to have this. Guess the meaning from the context. So we're going to have some context, and then we're going to guess what is the meaning. 
Okay, so I need you to take a look of the sentence, read them carefully, so we can work on this one. I'm gonna give you three minutes so you can read all the uh, sentences. Yes, and then we have the minutes. So I needed to read all of them. And then after three minutes, uh, three minutes, I will start asking participation in DP20, okay? You got it? Okay, three minutes. Okay, thank you so much. We're going to start with you, um, Olga. Thank you, Olga. Number two is for you, please. Read and then give me one of the, uh, what is the option, okay? It is expensive. Okay, please read Read the sentence, Rio de Janeiro. Rio de Janeiro, the picturesque city of beautiful beach. Carnival and the samba. Exactly. Very good. Beaches. A picturesque. Beaches, picturesque. Very good. And you told me expensive, right? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Does anybody else, does anybody else have a different answer with number two? I think it's pretty. Okay. Thank you so much, Sarah. Somebody else? Yes, we're gonna sing the song together, together. Yeah, yeah from High School Musical, right? So we can resolve all this one together. Yeah, I was watching that video, by the way, like from High School Musical. <laughs> and it's funny, the way they dance. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I have it in my mind. Okay, Um. so somebody else with a different answer? Yeah, uh, Sarah is just telling that, oh, that's pretty. Yeah. What is the, what is the meaning of picturesque? Picturesque. Mm -hmm. Pintoresco. Oh, yes. Very good. Right. E exactly. Old fashioned. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Old fashioned. Mm. Yes. Well, let me tell you that Sarah is correct. Yes. Sarah, yes, got the run uh, the correct answer. Okay, so very good, Sarah. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so these two are incorrect. Uh, picturesque city um, means that, well, it's pretty, right? So you can take pictures in different, let's say, spaces or places, right? Um, and, and, and you can save those pictures for your... Uh, yourself so you can show later to your friends or to your relatives yep okay thank you so much very good perfect uh jose lino number three please read the information first and then give me your option Posi, posi me, me pain okay please read read the information lino this one read this one 
You're inviting my space. Very good. Okay, your answer is causing me pain, right? Yes? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Right. What is pain? Uh-huh. I remember this character from Naruto Uzumaki, pain. Yes, <laughs> do you remember that one? <laughs> Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So he always was in pain. Yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah, because he was like very strong yeah. character. Uh, I'm sorry, Lina, but the answer is incorrect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice try. Make me, make Making me, me uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Very good. You're invading my space, right? So it's like, this is my space. And so when it gets close to me, yeah, so that's. Uh, invading my space, right? You, that makes you un uncomfortable. Very good. Yes, so that makes you uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, so the correct one is making me uncomfortable, right? When you are like with somebody and somebody get close to you, you can say, you're invading my space. Or for example, when somebody gets into your office, right? Oh, oh you're invading my space. Usually countries, they do that. Right, countries they do that, right? <laughs> like Honduras in El Salvador, right? Yeah, in us in a war, they say, Oh, you're invading my space, right? The territory. Okay, thank you so much. Blanca, hello, Blanca. Blanca. Hello, teacher. Thank you so much. Uh, one more time, please. Number four is for you. It's customary in my culture to have a huge meal. In the middle of the day. It's usual. Oh, perfect. That is correct. It's usual, right? Like in Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> a huge meal. Yes. Yeah. The poor guy was like waiting. Yeah. Uh, that was a pity guy, right? He was waiting for a big lunch, but now just a sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. That was that wasn't good. Okay. <laughs> uh, he did it just for the papers, right? That's why. Okay, thank you so much. That is good. Unusual. I'm sorry, usual. Yipsy. Okay, what about this exercise here? It says, which customs and situation discussed in the video would make you feel uncomfortable when visiting a foreign country? You need to rank from one most uncomfortable and six less uncomfortable. Okay, think about it and I will ask you in two minutes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think about like we have using public transportation, yeah, greeting someone by kissing on the cheeks. Oh, that's good. Eating a huge meal in the middle of the day. Okay. Another one having only soup and <laughs> sandwich for lunch. <laughs> Using a private bus system. Oh, look at this one. Like here in El Salvador, we have a private bus system, right? Everything is private. Yeah. We don't get a good service, that is right, but but then at the end it's private. Greeting someone by shaking hands. Okay, so let me see. Marlene, hello Marlene. Can you participate, Marlene? Yes or no? Hello, Marlene. Good evening. Hi, teacher. Thank you. How are you? Um I'm feeling my my girl. Oh, like, I'm sorry. Right I'm now, sorry. Yes. Now, keep, keep working on that, okay? I'm sorry, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Thank you so much for letting me know. Okay. Uh, let's work with Karen Yvette Villanueva Guzman. Karen Yvette Villanueva Guzman. Yes, teacher. Thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Sounds good. Tell me, please, from one most comfortable to six least um comfortable which ones what's what is your like your rank please mm, uncomfortable mm, greeting greeting song by kissing of the ship 
Okay, so that is number one. Which one is number two for you? Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe you see public transportation. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. Very good. What is the number three for you? Mm. Uh, what does it mean shaking, teacher? Oh, shaking. What is that thing? Greeting oh. someone oh, by shaking, shaking hands. hands. Like this one. Um, yes, three, number three. Okay. Yo, now, now that we have COVID, right? Just be careful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Only alcohol help. <laughs> exactly, right? Yes. All day. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Yes. Everywhere. <laughs> mm. Um, I don't know the other is... Yes, which one is number four for you? For eating a food meal in the middle of the day. Okay, thank you. What about the number five? Um using a private bus system okay thank you and the number six i uh, should be this one right because that's the only one only having yeah having a having only soup. soup and a sandwich yes for lunch right. oh so it's like when you get paid a big meal right but then during the rest of the month just a sandwich and a little bit of soup okay thank you so much very good you, great job thank you okie dokie Thank you, thank you. Let's continue. We're going to have another exercise, which is this one. We have noun, adjective, and verb forms. Okay. This one, so how is difficult. Okay. We're going to work with complete the sentences about expectations with the correct words in parentheses. Okay. So in parentheses, we have two options traditional or Tradition, I'm sorry, tradition or traditional. So we need to pick one to complete the sentence. Let's begin with you, Selena. Thank you. Go ahead. The first is traditional. Thank you so much. Perfect. Good. Sara, number two. You are expected. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very good. Olga, number three. Yes. Customary. Very good, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jenny, number four. Maybe suppose. Oh, suppose. Suppose. Okay, very good. Suppose. Oh, Jesus, suppose. Uh, this one, let me check. Oh, yeah, I did it. Thank you. Yes, very good. Number five, that is for you. Um, Let me see. Okay. Okay. No. Roberto. Thank you, Roberto. Number five. Yeah. Number five, I think, tradition. Okay, very good. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, Blanca, number six. Thank you. What is the custom of greeting people in your country? Okay, thank you. Uh, Roberto Eduardo Escamilla, number seven, please. Thank you. Uh, let me see. I didn't have any expectation about what the life was like. Thank you. You told me expect. Um, 
Expectations, right? Yeah, expectation. Very good. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oh, and Neftali, the number eight is for you. Yeah. What do you What do you suppose I should do when I want more food? Oh, thank you so much. Suppose. Okay. Thank you. Please do me a favor. Ah, uh, let me see, Olga. Please read all the sentences. Thank you so much. From one to eight. Go ahead. It is traditional to have a large meal at noon in Mexico. You are expected to kiss people on both cheeks in Brazil. It is customary for people to take public public transportation in Peru. Are you supposed to kiss people on both checks in Mexico. My family has a tradition of eating dessert at every meal. What is she custom? What is the custom of greeting people in your country? I didn't have any expectation about what life was like in Peru. What do you suppose I should do when I want more food? Thank you so much. Very good. So no tilde with Peru, right? Very good. Thank you. Everything is awesome. Okay, the first activity is about speaking. If you say, moving to a foreign country. Okay. What is your opinion about this title, uh, Wendy? Tell me, please. Moving to a foreign country. What do you understand about this title? Hello, Wendy. Do you do you understand the title moving to a foreign country? Is it difficult? Is it easy? No. Janet Carolina Rivera. Moving to a foreign country. Is it easy or difficult? Mm-hmm. Maria Santos Lopez, what about you? What is your opinion about moving to a foreign country? Will you do it? Blanca. Hello, Blanca. Moving to a foreign country. What is your opinion about? Is it easy? Is it difficult? Mm, I think it's difficult because if you don't have any family in the other country, it's or friends. I think it's difficult too, but you can do it. You That's can leave, you can, how do you say, acostumbrar? Um, you get used to. You get used to live in another country mm -hmm. for your family. Yeah, that is so right. Yeah. Like, like, as humans, we have this characteristic, like from moving to another place. Uh, as as you mentioned, we face different challenges. Yeah, yes. that's something normal that happens. But at the end, yeah, we get used to that place, and and then we face that, and we overcome all those challenges that we can have. Thank you. Question for you, Jenny: What country would you like to visit? I'm sorry, to live in, and why? Let's imagine that you have the chance to travel abroad. And they gave you the chance to live in another country. What country would you like to live in and why? For me, I like we live in Japan because it's a country with uh, a big culture and I like the Japanese. <laughs> The Japanese man. <laughs> That's a huge purpose. That's a huge purpose, right? Yes, very good. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. It's very good. Thank you. Okay. Let's work with you, Sarah. Second question. What country wouldn't you like to live in and why? So this is the opposite, right, Sarah? So here you have Jenny got the first one, which is positive about living abroad. But you got the opposite, right? The negative. 
Tell me, please. I think I wouldn't like to live in Canada because I know that it's a country very cold. And I don't like that type of climate. It's a freezing country. Yeah. That's yeah. the way that's the way I remember Canada. It's like Antarctica, right? It's a freezing country. Yeah. Just like two months, like Boston, right? Somebody was talking about Boston. Yes, like it's freezing over there. Okay. Thank you so much. Very good. Next question is for you. Uh, let me see. Uh, Roberto, thank you. Who is the person you would most like to go abroad with? Like if you have... <gasps> Excuse me, give me a minute, please. Okay. Hello, hello. Yes, teacher. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got something like on my screen that got me like shock. Okay, let's say. Uh, yes, yes. Who is who is the person that you would most like to go abroad with? Uh, you mean like uh, my favorite uh, person or something like this? Exactly, exactly. Who who is the person? Uh, maybe. A celebrity that that's that's what they're talking about or something like oh, that. I mean, now, I mean, if you have the chance to go with somebody else, like to go oh, with somebody else, mm -hmm. oh, yes. um, like uh, the, who is that person? Uh, yeah, with my girlfriend. Yeah. So that that mm -hmm. now, tell me why, please. Okay. <laughs> um, well, because you know, I feel I, I I'm gonna feel very well with her and we're gonna get fun um yeah with her or may or, or actually with my mom with my mother um uh, yeah because uh oh with both both with my girlfriend and with my mom um we're gonna get fun maybe i don't know um because you maybe, are in love <laughs> maybe a uh, maybe yeah, maybe just for the moment <laughs> it's a but, right yeah it worked it worked, it worked. Yeah, <laughs> but you know you know what i i wanna i wanna i will maybe in the future uh i want to go to uh, colombia uh that country for me or or peru that country for me is is it have has a lot of culture, you know. For for example, that the the mountain I, re I remember the name uh, is a but is it's a big mountain. Um, but I don't know. I don't remember the name is Machu Picchu. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, that's in Peru. I, right? Yeah, I want to know. I want to know the place. You know. Would be maybe, good. Yeah, maybe in the future. So yeah, if you have the chance, do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank I you so much that. for sharing that. Very All good. Right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um okay, let's carry on with you, um, Neftali. What is something that you would never travel without? What is something that you would never travel without? What is something you'll never travel without? With my cell phone could be. Oh, <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> Just to get in touch with people. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Maybe your passport is another one. <laughs> yeah. And then the passport, the, yeah, the passport <laughs> and my cell phone. I love my cell phone. <laughs> yes. So you can have both. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you. Okay, let's carry on with Olga. Thank you, Olga. Who is the person you would email first after arriving somewhere new. Yeah, so who who's this person that you will get in touch as soon as My you get sister. there? Oh, okay. Why your sister? Because my sister um, now 
de varios, varios países. En Chile, she know about the experience in food in tradition so you can get some advices right from her yeah suggestions oh that's good yes. thank you so much olga for sharing that okay okay very good so as you may know well this class was about traveling abroad like yes how difficult it is to like live there, like if you have the chance, and also how so what are the challenges that we face when we travel? Yes, for some people it's easy, but for some of us it is not. Yes, something that um sometimes is difficult is the food. Yeah, so uh, dealing with food abroad is not a piece of cake. Yeah, it's not a piece of cake. Um, yes, okay. So thank you so much for being here, people. Uh, we're going to finish the class. And tomorrow we will continue working in another one. Thank you so much for being here. Good night and see you yeah, tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Okay. Good night. Okay. Thank you so much. Tea with lemon. Okay, Marlene? Tea with lemon. Bye-bye. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Okay.